I thought it would be a good idea to do a little overview of Excel 2010. Don't forget that Excel 2007 is similar, so if you're getting to grips with that, then this might help too. But I just wanted to cover some of the key points, some of the new things they've done in here. And the most obvious thing that they've done is they've changed this. Here, there is no menu. This is all in a ribbon. That's what they're calling this line across here. It's like a giant toolbar, really. And what it means is that they've actually brought out a lot of things that were in the menus and hidden away, and in some ways made it easier to find. But if you've been used to the other one, then maybe not so easy. So just a quick look around here. These are the tabs. So this is the file tab here. When you click on it, you get all the usual save, save as, open, close. There's info as well, so you can see about who can open things, protecting workbooks, and things like that were sort of hidden away in the save as area before. So they have actually made that a little bit better. Sharing they've made more obvious, and also down here you've got versions as well. You can see your most recent files by clicking here, and you get your recent workbooks. And also you've got things for like new. If I click on new here, you'll see it's got blank workbook and you've got recent templates. If I click on those, there's none. So if I just go back to home here, it takes me back. You've got sample templates, billing, blood pressure tracker. Going to a new software package might send your blood pressure up, so you might need to have a look at that. There's printing. And you've got all your options down here. And again, they've just brought it out to make it easier to find everything. So that's what you have there. You've got save and send. So if you want to be able to send using an email, save it to the web. There's a thing called SharePoint. Some of you may have come across it. We're not going to touch on that here. You can save it to SharePoint so you can collaborate with people. And you'll see that here it's got send using email selected. And across here, you can send as attachment, link, PDF, automatically turn it into a PDF for you. And there's other options as well, but they're the most key ones. And as I said, I just want to give you a quick overview. There's help down here. Okay, so if I click on help. But there is also in the top right-hand corner this little button here as well, which is also the help button. And all you have to do is click on that. You have options. This used to be under tools, and it comes up with this dialog box here. Everything from your general ones to formulas, proofing, saving where you want things to be saved. And this one here, save files in this format. This is the new Excel format that they started in 2007. You'll see it ends in an X if you're familiar with this. It used to be .xls. They've now added an X at the end. This can cause a problem for people who've got 2003 because they can't open it unless they add in this little patch add-in to fix it. So it might be an idea to switch it to that. That will then allow you to send it to pretty much everyone if they've got open office or something like that. So I'm going to leave it as that. I'm just going to press OK, which is way down off the screen here. So that's a quick look at what they've got in the file menu file tab here. In 2007 it used to be a little office button at the top. We used to call that the pizza button. Not like a pizza. Anyway, this is the home. This is your first one. This is a default one it tends to go for. And you'll see it's got all the common sorts of things. You've got your formatting, so you've got your number formatting. You've got things like conditional formatting, format as table, so you've got your styles. You've got here cells for inserting, deleting, and adding in rows and columns. So if you click on it, You've got insert cells, rows, columns, and so on, which you used to have to go to a sub-menu to find or right-click, which you can still do. Everything still works on a right-click. Don't forget that. You've got your auto sum here. And again, the sorts of things that you see is as you move the mouse over, what happens is down here, it's coming up showing you a little sample of what you should do. You have your fill. This is your, like your auto fill thing as well. So you've got some extra features there, so you don't have to do it by clicking on that. And you'll see here you've got clear, and you can see that it's coming up with either messages or showing you how to do things, sorting and filtering, finding and selecting. It's all on these drop-downs, so they're nice and easy and quick to find. So 
that's one side of it. So they're actually making it a little bit easier to find things. And you'll see that I can click on any of these tabs here. So you've got insert, and immediately there, picture, clip art, all of these are available. Screenshot, you can take a picture of the screen and insert it in. This is different when you want to create a graph. You just simply highlight your data if you're used to creating graphs. I'm going to be do doing tutorials on a lot of these in more detail. But you just go straight to whichever one it is. You kind of almost bypass the chart wizard that you had before. So there's all your other charts. And you'll see they've got extra things here, useful things. This filter here, this slicer, we'll be taking a look at in another tutorial. And there's more here too. So that's the insert. You've got things like page layout. And what this has done actually by bringing all of this out is giving you the ability to quickly see stuff that you may not have been aware of before, such as a, if I move across here, because you know you can get rid of the grid lines. If I untick that, your grid lines are gone. Your cells still work here. So you can put them back in if you like. So for printing and things like that, you might want that there. You also have formulas. And this is where you find your insert function, auto sum, and then you've got your average count numbers as well, more functions. And where you used to go into the insert function and find categories, they're now all straight out on here as well. Naming ranges, also easy, just there in the middle. Formula auditing and so on, and you've got calculation options. So what this has done is potentially things that you may not have been aware of are now available. So you can also import data from things like Access, the web, text, or from other sources. And you have also got filtering here as well. Some of these things appear on more than one menu and sometimes with, sorry, on more than one ribbon. And with that, you actually get to see sometimes more options. And if you move across, you'll see it's got all sorts of things here, like the what-if analysis, the consolidation, and so on. There's one here that says new tab. That's because I was messing around trying to see how to actually add extra buttons. So this is like having my own customized toolbar. You have review as well. So things like putting in comments, doing your spelling, protecting sheets and workbooks are all kind of a bit more visible. And under view, you've got things like your page layout, freeze panes as well, which is along here. Okay, and you've also got others as well this is where you find macros in case you're wondering if you've been using macros where they've put them so it's all here and actually there are a couple of bits that make it a bit easier to use so is it better well it has got extra features I'm just going to open up one here i'm going to just open one called let me just move this up this one jargon free samples for tutorials there you go and I've got my little database here. I'm just going to move down. And what you'll see is I've got here just some movies. I just wanted a short list to, just to show you something. Um, they have made changes. For example, let me just go back to home here. And what I could do is if I want to do the sorting and filtering. So I want to sort these. I want to do it by title, director, and then say by cost. And previously, you used to be able to sort up to three different levels. You can now sort up to 64. So all you need to do is, as always, just make sure you've got one of the cells selected inside there. Go to my drop-down list. You can see you can just immediately sort A to Z, Z to A, and there's a custom sort as well. I just want to show you something. If I now click in the cost one, I've, you can't see it there, but I've now clicked in the cost column. And you'll see it actually changes. It doesn't say A to Z and Z to A anymore. It's like smallest to largest. And if you had dates, it says oldest to newest. So they've changed the way that they say these different things now as well. So I'm just going to switch on. I'm going to click in there. My custom sort. And when I do, you'll see that it is now very different to what it was before. I can turn it to sort by. And it tells me so I can do by the title. And you'll see I've got my data headers on. That's because I've actually got headers in there. And I can type sort by A to Z or Z to A. And there's also a custom list. But what if I wanted to sort by another level? So after title, I then want to say if there were two the same, by director. And I just need to choose director for that. And again, same thing there. And I can just 
add another level and I can sort by cost. Okay, and you can see it's the smallest to largest. So once, and I could keep going. 64, I think that's more than enough for anybody. I'm going to click on OK. I will be covering sorting properly in more detail so you get to see a bit more of that. And there you go, sorted by title, then by director, and then by cost. Another thing that they added in here that they made um, also with lots of features, and that is uh, conditional formatting. So I'm just going to highlight my costs here. Conditional formatting is actually in another tutorial, and I did it in 2003. What it enables you to do is, based on how big a value is in a, a, in a cell, you can then get it to display whether it's bold, italic, what colors you want, and so on. But here they've gone another step further. So if I just go to my conditional formatting, in data bars, and you can see as I'm sort of moving over different ones, it's showing me what it will do. I can tell it as well to do other things. So I can say there are other things I can do. I can choose highlight cells and you can see it does a, what I want to do if it's greater than a particular number, less than, between, equal to, text it contains, when a date is occurring and say duplicate powers. But let's say I wanted all of mine, anything over five, to be highlighted, say, as in bold. So I just click on it, my dialog box comes up, format cells that are greater than, and I'm just going to change that to 10. And it has some predetermined ones. Fill light red, fill with dark red text, yellow fill with dark yellow text, green, red text. Let's just do red text here. You could do a custom format. And you could tell it exactly what you want to come up. And you can do all sorts of things here with formatting. So you could say if it's over a certain value, you could make it bold and italic. And you could change the, uh, well, I could change the font color here. Let me do that. But you could see there I could change the background color. I'm just going to pick anything here. Um, and then what I'm going to do is just click on OK. And if I click on OK again, then across here, you'll see that anything that meets that condition, I did anything greater than 10, so let me make that 11, and you can see it changes. And conditional formatting now just gives you so many more options there. You can now sort based on cell color, background color, and things like that. One other thing I just want to point out here on the um, ribbon, I'm going to move this across, is that here in the bottom corner of some of them, you will see this little arrow here in the bottom here of each section and if you click on something like that you will get a dialog box coming up which is familiar it's very much the same as what you've got in the other versions so just if you do see that it's not on all of them so these here don't have them but this one does you will actually be able to do you, you will actually get a dialog box coming up there that will help you so that is a quick overview of just getting started with Excel. Don't forget you've got the quick access toolbar up here. So you've got save and you can customize that as well. So I could have open appear on here and new. And you can see there's a few others as well and including more commands. And I could choose that and pick out some others. So that's getting started with Excel 2010.